Here when we multiply, we want to take it variable by variable. So when we see this first problem, we want to start with the coefficients and say we're doing 3 times 4. 3 times 4 would give me 12. Then I deal with the variables. These are the same base, so I combine their exponents. When I have an x, it's to the understood first power. So this becomes x to that first power plus this seventh power. That means I end up with 12x to the 1 plus 7 is x to the 8th. For part b, I start with the numbers. Negative 2 is being multiplied by an understood 1, so that gives me negative 2. First power of x is 2, plus the second power on x is 6. So what I'm talking about is first power, meaning x to the second here, is being multiplied by second power of x, the x to the sixth here. My rule of exponents says I add those exponents. I then have a y to the third and a y to the eighth. So this becomes y to the 3 plus 8. When I combine these, I still get the negative 2. 2 plus 6 gives me x to the 8th. 3 plus 8 gives me y to the 11th. Here when I do 14 times negative 3, I probably want a calculator to help me out, but I should get negative 42. On the x terms, there's a 7 here and an 11 here. When I add those, I get 18. And on the y terms, there's a 4 here and a 7 here. When I add those, I get 11. That's why my final answer is negative 42, x to the 18th, y to the 11th. When I have this 3x squared being distributed to each of these three terms, I need to see it as three separate multiplications. The first one is 3x squared times the first term, also 3x squared. Then I add to that 3x squared times the second term, negative x. Then I add to that 3x squared times the third term, negative 10. So this is just the distributive property, saying if I have something outside of a parentheses, I need to multiply it by each term inside the parentheses. My first multiplication, 3 times 3, gives me 9. x to the 2 plus 2 ends up as x to the 4th. My second, positive 3 times a negative 1, gives me negative 3 x to the second power, x to the first power, combined to give me x to the 2 plus 1 is x to the third power. Finally, positive 3 times negative 10 gives me negative 30. I have x squared here, but I don't have any x's or x to the 0 to combine it with. That's why it stays as x squared. When I do these multiplications of binomials, again, it's absolutely fine if you know the FOIL method and want to use it. I'm going to show it as double distribution. So I'm going to show it as first, this 3x is multiplied by each term in the second parentheses. So it becomes 3x times x plus 3x times negative 4. Then this second term is multiplied by each term in the second parentheses. So it becomes plus 1 times x plus 1 times negative 4. If I clean this up, 3x times x gives me 3x squared. 3x times negative 4 gives me negative 12x. 1 times x gives me x. And 1 times negative 4 gives me negative 4. My last step is to combine the like terms, which are the middle two. This negative 12x and this positive 1 combine to give me a negative 11x. So I wind up with 3x squared minus 11x minus 4. When I have this x plus 2 squared, there is a trick that they teach you in the book that I kind of talk about in lecture, but I'd rather you just see this as saying it's x plus 2 times itself, and instead of learning a separate trick how to deal with it, deal with it the same way we dealt with this. So say that this is really x times the second parentheses plus 2 times the second parentheses which becomes x times x plus x times 2 plus 2 times x plus 2 times 2. x times x gives me x squared. x times 2 gives me plus 2x. 2 times x gives me plus 2x. And 2 times 2 gives me plus 4. Combining the like terms in the middle, 2x and 2x give me 4x. So I wind up with x squared plus 4x plus 4. If you wanted to use the shortcut, the shortcut basically says 
if you're taking a binomial and squaring it, square the first term to find the first term. Square the second term to find the last term. Multiply these by each other, getting 2x, and multiply by 2 to find the middle term. So it's fine to use this pattern if you recognize it. I just think it's easier to see it like this because you're much more likely to get something like this in the future and you really want to make sure you know how to multiply a binomial by a binomial. So instead of having to memorize the trick, as long as you can do this, you'll get to the correct final answer. Same idea here with the y plus 7. I'd rather you just write it out as y plus 7 times y plus 7 and do all this same math that I just did. So this would become y times y plus 7 plus 7 times y plus 7. Y times Y plus 7 gives me Y times Y plus Y times 7. 7 times Y plus 7 gives me 7 times Y plus 7 times 7. Y times Y is Y squared. 7 times Y is 7Y. Seven 7 times Y is 7Y. And 7 times itself is 49. When I combine the like terms in the middle, this 7y and this 7y combine to give me 14y. So I wind up with y squared plus 14y plus 49 as my final answer. Again, I can get there quicker if I want to learn the trick by saying square the first term, y squared, square the last term, 49. For the middle term, multiply the two things together. 7 times y gives me 7y. And then multiply by 2, which is how I get to 14. For part D, this isn't something being squared. You see the differences. There's a plus here and a minus here. Again, there is a trick to this one that I'll show at the end, but I'd rather you just multiply it out, double distribution. This 2x times this whole parentheses plus this 5 times this whole parentheses. 2x gets multiplied by 2x. Then 2x gets multiplied by negative 5. Then 5 gets multiplied by 2x. Then 5 gets multiplied by negative 5. 2 times 2 gives me 4. x times x gives me x squared. 2 times negative 5 gives me negative 10x. 5 times 2 gives me positive 10x. And positive 5 times negative 5 gives me negative 25. Combining the like terms in the middle, since this is a negative 10 and that's a positive 10x, these are equal and opposite terms and will zero each other out. So I'll just be left with 4x squared minus 25. When this problem began, I had the same binomial, one with a positive sign, one with a negative sign. That's always going to create a difference of squares, where if I square the first term or multiply it by itself, that's where the 4x squared comes from. If I square the second term or multiply it by itself, 5 times 5 or 5 squared would give me 25. And then I put a subtraction sign in between them. So again, this is a pattern that you can pick up on and use. I would rather you just understand how to multiply binomial by binomial, and eventually it will end at the right spot. I'm going to pause here so I can write up the rest of the problems and then hop back in. Continuing on, problem 3 asks me to simplify the expression. So this gives me two different binomials to foil out or to double distribute. And then I need to make sure I apply this negative sign to every term that's created here. Once I do that, I can combine like terms and see what I end up with. So we're going to start with this binomial being multiplied by this binomial. It's going to become x times x plus x times negative 2, plus 3 times x, plus 3 times negative 2. From that, we're going to subtract the result of this multiplication. So I'm going to put it all in parentheses. 3x times 2x, plus 3x times negative 1, plus 4 times 2x, plus 4 times negative 1. x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 2 gives me negative 2x. 
3 times x gives me positive 3x, and 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6. I'm going to keep that negative and keep everything here in parentheses just to remind myself that I'm going to have to distribute that negative in the end. 3x times 2x gives me 6x squared. 3x times negative 1 gives me negative 3x. 4 times 2x gives me positive 8x. And 4 times negative 1 gives me negative 4. Combining the like terms in the middle here, I end up with x squared plus x minus 6. Combining the like terms in the middle here, I get negative 6x squared minus 3 and positive 8 combined to give me plus 5x minus 4. Now that I've got this down to just three terms, it's probably the best time for me to distribute that negative. So I'm going to keep everything the same with the first three terms, x squared plus x minus 6. When I distribute this negative, negative times a positive gives me negative 6x squared. Negative times a positive gives me negative 5x. And a negative times a negative gives me a positive 4. I can now combine the like terms, this x squared and this negative 6x squared, combined to give me negative 5x squared. This positive x and this negative 5x combined to give me negative 4x. This negative 6 and this positive 4 combined to give me negative 2. So I started here, I ended with the final answer, negative 5x squared minus 4x minus 2. Now moving on to division. When I'm doing these division problems, I'm really thinking about my exponent rule that says I take the power on the top minus the power on the bottom. That's how I end up with x to the fifth here. When I do part b, I need to first deal with the division of the coefficients. If I put into my calculator 9 divided by negative 3, I get negative 3. Really, that's because I can break this down into 3 times 3 and negative 3 times 1. So if I cancel one of those 3s, I get 3 over negative 1. So I'm going to call this negative 3 on top. I then want to take the power on top minus power on bottom for each of these. So this is going to become x to the 9 minus 4, y to the 5 minus 2. I actually don't need this fraction line because every power was bigger on top. I'm not going to end up with anything on bottom of my fraction. So this is going to become negative 3. 9 minus 4 tells me the power on x is 5. 5 minus 2 tells me the power on y is 3. Part C here is really just asking me to properly break this into two fractions. So instead of calling this 12x minus 30 over 6, I can call it 12x over 6 minus 30 over 6. 6 goes into 12 twice, so that just winds up being 2x. 6 goes into 35 times, so that's how I get minus 5. Part D is a little bit of a trick. You want this to be a y because that's how it's looked in the past. It's actually an x, so this is meant to mimic a problem that's on your homework. Really what I want to do first is combine the top exponents, so x to the 4th and x to the 5th becomes x to the 4 plus 5 or x to the 9th. I don't have any other y's to mess with, so I can just leave that y squared on bottom. On top, I have x to the power on top, 9, minus power on bottom, 2. That's why my final answer is x to the 7th over y to the 2nd. 